Today's lesson objectives will cover TEKS 5.4e and 5.4f. 5.4e states to describe the meaning of parentheses and brackets in a numeric expression. 5.4f reads to simplify numerical expressions that do not involve exponents, including up to two levels of grouping. First, let's understand what an expression is. An expression is just a mathematical phrase with no equal signs that may contain a number, an unknown, and or operators. So, for example, um, here you have 3 times open bracket, 7 plus 2 minus open parentheses, 8 plus 4, close parentheses, close bracket, plus 2. That's a rather lengthy expression, but that is an example of an expression because you have numbers and operators. Operators are like your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and grouping symbols. Okay? Um, now, within that, we talked about parentheses and brackets. Parentheses and brackets are symbols to show a group of terms and or expressions within a mathematical expression. So basically, you're taking a long expression, like the example here, and you're breaking parts of it into a smaller section, into their own individual expressions. So with the parentheses in this example, you are uh, grouping the 8 plus 4 together. So that's becoming its own expression. And with the brackets, we're including the 7 plus 2 minus the parentheses 8 plus 4. So that's making its own expression. Okay. Now, those uh, symbols also will tell us the order that it should be worked. You always start with the innermost parentheses first when working with parentheses. So because the, in this case, the rounded parentheses are with inside the brackets, we would start with the rounded parentheses first. We'd work the 8 plus 4 first. Then once we solve that, we would move outward to the brackets and work with what's inside the brackets. And once that's complete, then we can work outside to finish up the remaining part of the expression. Okay. So when evaluating expressions, always start with the innermost parentheses first and then work your way out to the next set of parentheses beyond that. In the second example to the right, you can see how it can also be done without brackets, just using simply the rounded parentheses. All right, but you still do the same way. You still work with the innermost parentheses first, then work your way out to the outer set of parentheses. So you can see that right here with the red box being the inside set of parentheses the blue box being the outside set of parentheses. One other use for parentheses is when you um, have parentheses without an operation symbol, it might represent multiplication. Okay, We use lots of different things to help us represent multiplication. Uh, when you first learned how to multiply, you most likely used a little x symbol to represent multiplication. From there, as you guys have gotten a little bit older, you've started seeing them use this little dot. Okay, this right here, this little dot here, to represent multiplication. And now this year, one other way that we're going to learn that you can represent multiplication is by use of parentheses and brackets. So here are some different examples of the same multiplication problem, just represented in different ways. So every one of these examples you see here represents 5 times 15 and they all give you the same result, 75, okay? It's just different ways to represent multiplication. So here's your x, the x that you learned probably back in elementary school, early elementary school. Here's the, the period, or the dot. Um, this is what you probably have learned more recently. And now we're learning about how you can use parentheses to show multiplication. See how there's no operator symbol between the 5 and the 15? There's no addition or subtraction or anything in between them. So that's how I know this is multiplication, when the numbers are right next to each other like that, just simply separated by parentheses. Okay? You can even use double parentheses. Again, notice no operator symbol in between the two numbers. So this is how I know it's multiplication. Okay? It can be done with brackets just like you do with the parentheses. Alright, so that is one other possible use for using parentheses and brackets. Now, anytime we're looking at a numerical expression that does not involve any variables, uh, we're often asked to evaluate or simplify it. We're usually asked to simplify it down to a single value, if possible. And so when there's no variable, 
like such as an x or a y or something like that in the expression, that's a possibility. We can simplify it down to just a single number. And so in order to do that, to where we all come out with the same answer, we have to follow a certain set of rules. Okay, and these are the rules that we follow. Step one is we work all the parentheses or brackets in the problem first. Okay, so you simplify whatever's inside your parentheses or whatever's inside your brackets first. Now, within those parentheses or those brackets, if you have more than one operator symbol, you still work them in the order that we have remaining. You're still going to do the multiplication division first within the parentheses and bracket. And once that's done, if there's any addition or subtraction inside the bracket or parentheses, you do that second. Okay? Um, now, one note here. We can actually use a fraction bar as a parentheses. And what I mean by that is, normally when we, we see the fraction bar, we just see it used in a typical fraction, like say 5 eighths. So you have 5 fraction bar and then 8 on bottom. But in some numerical expressions, we can put more than just a single number in the numerator or in the denominator. For example, we might put 5 plus 4 in the numerator, then put a fraction bar, and then on bottom put 6 minus 3. So in that example, the fraction bar is acting like a parenthesis. It's wanting you to work everything in the numerator first and get it down to a single number, then work everything in the denominator second and get it down to a single number, and then of course fraction bars actually mean to divide, so the final step would be to divide those two numbers if possible. Otherwise we just leave it as a fraction. Okay? So that's, you'll see an example of that in a minute, but you can actually use fraction bars as a parenthesis. Now as I was stating earlier, um, once you get done with the parentheses and the brackets, and your next step is to do any remaining multiplication or division. Now, multiplication division is always done from left to right. So start from the far left side of the problem, and whether it doesn't matter whether it's division it shows up first or if it's multiplication it shows up first. Whichever one shows up first, you work it, and then you keep working your way to the right, doing all the multiplication division as you go. Once that's done, it's the same thing with addition and subtraction. Start at the far left, work your way to the right until all the addition and subtraction is done. If you always work your problems in this order, you'll always come up with the same answer as everyone else who has worked that problem in the past. Um, and you should always wind up with just a single number when you're done. Okay? So we're going to quickly look at a few examples. So in the first column, you're going to have the original numerical expression. So this is how the problem started out. In the middle column, they're going to show the steps that you would take to simplify that numerical expression. And then the far right column tells you which process they used in order to do that simplification step. So in the very first one, 6 plus 9 times 3 and 4 fifths, there's no sets of parentheses or brackets. So we skip step 1 and we go straight to step 2. Step 2 says to look for multiplication. So there is multiplication here, 9 times 3 and 4 fifths. So notice over here in the simplification column, that's the first step they did. They multiplied to get 34 and 1 fifth. Then that simply leaves addition. So we do addition last. And so we wind up with our final answer, 40 and 1 fifths. Okay? Um, same thing here with this next one. We don't have any parentheses, no brackets, so we don't worry about that. We go to step two. We look for any multiplication or division. We can see there's a division here in the front, so we're going to work out one half divided by three and see that that makes one six. And then that leaves us with subtraction to do, and so one six minus one ninth gives us one eighteenth. Okay? Now, um, we'll do look at a few more like that. Here you got times and division. Again, no parentheses or brackets, so we start with the times and division. We go left to right, so times will come first, division will come second. On this one, we got just subtraction and addition, so we don't have to worry about steps one or steps two. So we go straight to step three, addition and subtraction. And we go left to right, so subtraction will happen first, addition will happen second. On this one, you have a set of parentheses, so we work the parentheses first. 45 take away 13 gives us 32. And then, when there's just a number next to another number with no operator symbol in between, we understand that's multiplication. So this will be 32 times 5. So that gives us 160. Here, you got two sets of parentheses. So work what's inside of each parentheses first. They're not with inside of each other, so you can actually work them from left to right. So we're going to do the subtraction, 9 and 1 third minus 3 and 1 half, and we get 5 and 5 sixths. 
Then we're going to do the 2 plus 1 and 2 thirds, and we get 3 and 2 thirds. Now that we're down to just a single number in each set of parentheses, we can go ahead and subtract our two answers that remain. So 5 and 5 6 minus 3 and 2 thirds leaves us with an answer of 2 and 1 6. Okay, so when the parentheses are not inside of each other, you just work them from left to right, just like you do the multiplication, division, and addition, and subtraction. All right, just a few more examples here to look at. This one is what I was talking about earlier. See, here we're using the fraction bar like a parentheses, meaning that we need to work everything in the numerator, get it down to a single number, work everything in the denominator, get it down to a single number, and then once we're done, we can divide our final two numbers. So 343 times 0.25 gives us 85.75. 14 times 0 0.5 gives us 7. And then the final step, we divide 85.75 by 7 to get 12.25. Okay? So that's using print, or using a fraction bar like a parenthesis. Here's yet another one. See the fraction bar? Now there's only a n one single number in the denominator, so I don't have to do anything with that. But I have a lot to do up here in the numerator, right? I've got some parentheses happening. They're not inside of each other, so I'm just going to do them from left to right. And then I've got some addition going on here. And then once I get down to a single number, I can divide it by 4. Okay, so that's what it's showing. So we multiply 128 times 9 to get 1,152. 1863 minus 237 gives us 1,626. And then we add from left to right, giving us... Um, add these two first to get 2,626, then add these to get 4,252, finally divide it by 4, and we get the 1,063. All right, this one, you've got, again, two sets of parentheses. Something's happening in both of them, so we do them from left to right. Start with the addition in this one to get 92.8. Do the subtraction here, we get 2. <laughs> um, and then we have division and multiplication. So again, we do that from left to right. So we're going to divide first, 92.8 divided by 2, and then multiply times 87. And we get our 4,036.8. All right, in our final example, this one we actually have parentheses with inside of brackets. So you got two sets of parentheses inside of these brackets. Again, we'll go left to right on the parentheses part. So we're going to do 2 fifths times 2 first. That gives us 4 fifths. And then we're going to do 2 tenths plus 6 fifteenths. So that gives us 3 fifths. And then we subtract 4 fifths minus 3 fifths to get 1 fifth. And then that finishes the brackets. So now we're ready to divide. 3 divided by 1 fifth. And that gives us 15. Okay? So if we didn't have order of operations, um, each one of us may have approached any one of these examples in a different order. And because of that, we would all have different results for our answers for these different problems. And so that's why order of operations came about, is so that everybody who looks at one of these problems would all work at the problem in the same order, so we all end up with the same results. Okay? Um, now, we didn't get, take time to go over how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with fractions and decimals. Um, that would, if you need help with that, let me know. That would be for a different lesson. Thank you for your time.